Kelly Van Wagner, and I'm a board certified internist in Las Vegas for 20 years. My career uh, spans from being a uh, just a regular provider, opened up my own office, then I opened up a freestanding ER, and then I went into becoming a medical director of a health plan. Next. So it's me and three other physicians, and our mission has always been since we opened our offices so long ago is to provide the highest quality of care facing customer service. And we moved that over into leveraging technology for that same principle. Next. So healthcare has always been described as being very complex. And the reason the complexity is there is because there's so many stakeholders. And sometimes our stakeholders actually have divergent operational goals. So for example, if you're playing hockey on Saturday and you hurt your knee, you might come to me, I'm gonna do an x-ray, I'm gonna do physical therapy, it didn't work, you're gonna to go to ortho, ortho's gonna order an MRI, they're gonna do lab work, they're gonna do a uh, knee replacement, we're gonna send you to the hospital. If you're gonna be a hospitalist, they're gonna send you home from DME and home health, and then you're gonna to get to your pharmacy, which is gonna be changed if the PBM member wants to switch it to let somebody that's cost effective, and then you're gonna get all your EOBs from your health plan. So you can see there's a lot of stakeholders, and that leads us to our problem, care coordination. We have always had a problem with this. We thought that moving to EMRs was going to solve it, and it didn't. So what we noticed in the survey done last month, two-thirds of physicians and providers still are faxing and emailing our correspondence to each other. So we thought we'd solve it and have patient-centered medical homes, meaning I would now be the center of all of your healthcare, and I would be the custodial of all of your records, and you could come to me and ask me for your records, and I can print you off a copy. But ultimately what you're noticing is that with all of those stakeholders, I'm lucky if I got the orthopedic note. I probably will get that one. I'm probably not gonna get the MRI because I didn't order it. It's not gonna get pushed to me. And I might not get the hospital records. So that leads to a giant fragmented data sets. Data sets for patients would be records, radiology reports, labs, EOBs, claims data. So that fragmented data set, next please. We, um, I'm sorry. Okay, a little slower. <laughs> I'm a little slower. I only have 10 minutes, so I apologize. I do speed up, so I'll slow down. Um, so we designed a personalized patient platform and to address the coordination of care, the core component of it is a personal health record. And that personal health record, we call it the next generation. The first generation was there over 10 years ago, with Google Health and Microsoft Health Vault. The problem was you had to manually update all that data. Oh. You had to manually update all that data. So what happens with ours is now that we have a new technology called FIRE, which is from HL7, which you, is FIRE stands for Fast Healthcare Interoperable Resource. We can now seamlessly bring records into a personal health record for a patient who owns their own record now. So if you come to me, you can actually pull down my entire record or the radiology report or the lab report. So you can imagine the personal health record is now gonna follow the patient as you move through the system. So we move off of having the provider be the, the hub, and now the patient is the hub, and all the providers are spokes around it. Next, please. So you can see with this now having the hub as the patient and us feeding all of our records into that patient uh, health record, we now have a comprehensive and accurate data set. It is actually fundamental that we get these accurate data sets that are comprehensive for two reasons. One, we've always wanted to move into, comp into value-based contracting. We really weren't able to do it because we had these fragmented data sets. The other thing that was a problem, I mean, excuse me, the other reason we need these comprehensive data sets is because of what all industries are gonna be doing, which is AI, DL, and ML. We need to have these data sets so that we can speed it through these, com these uh, cognitive platforms. Next, please. Now, I put patient engagement in here, which seems like almost a non sequitur, and typically when you're doing a startup, you just want to stay focused, but the reason I put it there is because what we have now is patients generating a lot of data off the system. So they have wearables, such as the um, Garmin or, or Fitbit, they have the Apple Health Watch with the EKG, and we have now what are called those home monitoring devices that are coming from the system itself. So it's our glucometers, it's our blood pressure machines, we now have what are called hospital to home, where you have home monitoring systems, where the patient's gonna generate a lot of data off of these devices. So you can imagine if all of this is coming off of one platform, how we can integrate the patient data as well as the health systems data. Next, please. So here's our product summary, the core function being the PHR. We're gonna be able to aggregate that comprehensive data set now 
And of course, the two types of uh, patient engagement. Next, please. So here's the business. Next. So the initial market, we're in Southern Nevada, so that's 2.2 million people. And with those demographics that I put there on the individual market, it's about 1.2 million individuals. We have a three-tier subscription range, $15, $25, $30, and it's at about 50% of the available market, which is about 100, uh, 180,000 patients, about 4.5 million monthly. And then we have a secondary market, which is the organization. So it could be a health plan, it could be um, an employer, it could also be an ACO, who wants this particular product for their patients, we put down an 88 cent PMPM. Now on our financial workbook, we do take it down to $10 a month, uh, which is equivalent to like net, uh, net, uh, Prime, uh, Amazon Prime. And we only do 7% of the market, which was the original market that was captured by Google um, Health and Microsoft Health Call, which is about $840,000 a month, and we dropped off the organization's um, contribution. Next, please. So the competitive edge for us is independence. And what I mean by independence is on two things. One, our PHR is not tethered. So it's independent and it moves with the patient as the patient moves through the system. The second part is independence based on uh, data privacy and data security. We don't have a revenue line for selling or sharing of data. Next, please. So when you look at the competition, when you say tethered, uh, United Healthcare down in the left corner recently came out with an IHR an individual health plan. That's, it, it actually would be a tethered system that if you leave for Cigna, it's not gonna follow you. Again, EMR vendors are coming up with PHRs and that's gonna be CERN just announced they have theirs at the end of the year, it's tethered. ACOs like Beth Israel on the East Coast have a wonderful PHR tethered. The next part of it is gonna be data selling and sharing. So you have Google, Amazon, who are definitely in the market now and are looking at it, as well as many people might know Apple came out with their personal health record. So when you talk about data sharing and data selling, a recent survey actually came out today that showed that only 11% of consumers or patients would trust their data to the FANG or to the, high, the big tech. They still trust us as doctors, 89%, but we lost nine. Their health plans, only 40% would trust their data to their health plans, and 40% and 40 would only um, provide, would actually be willing to give it to uh, clinical studies. We do have non-tethered on our side, non-tethered and not uh, sharing of data, which is called Health Connect. Health Connect is a group that the last time I heard anything from them was three years ago when they did pick up a contract with the United Postal Service. We haven't heard too much from them recently on them advancing into fire and some of the other newer technologies. There's also what's called Get Real Health. They're actually, their market is actually providers. So they're aggregating data mostly to sell to providers. I put an asterisk next to Apple and Gorilla Health. It currently is a tethered system because it's the Apple hardware, but you can imagine they move it to Android like they do Apple Music, and Gorilla Health is their kind of corresponding group. Next, please. Unlike the prior presenter, we are brand new. So it's me and three of my friends. And <laughs> And we have just now started out, and so this is us. Next. And here's our summary. And it's the next generation of personal and patient platform. And hopefully we're gonna be advancing the coordination of care, engagement, having data aggregation that's complete. We're, as a result, we would have been improving quality, efficiency and cost, which is triple aim. But most importantly to us is improving patient customer satisfaction, really making the patient now the center of our healthcare system. Next. And I don't know if I have time, but I do have four slides on how this, this, how the architecture looks on bringing this data into one site. I don't know if that's okay. You got yes. one minute. You got one minute left. So if you can okay, do it. Yes. So this is this is an EMR. You can see that Jitterbit is the integration platform. You just put there's EMRs have an API. You just put in Jitterbit. Next. You ask the doctor to authorize it. Next. And then I pulled it into uh, Salesforce Health Lab, just a CRM, and you can see these are the patients that got downloaded from uh, the EMR. Next. And here's the patient's record. And that's it.